Welcome! In this video I'm going to be taking a look at this Venlab digital multimeter. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reading it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description on Amazon. If you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. Now they also provided me with this non-contact voltage detector, so I'll be checking that out too. So let's get this open. We have probes. Here's the meter. Looks like it has a temperature probe. We have four AAA batteries, some fuses, and a manual. So let's get this open. So it has some plastic on the display here. I'll pull that off. Let's take a quick look at the manual. So here are the contents. We have some safety information. You want to make sure you read through all of this and follow everything. Even if you know how to be safe, it's not a bad idea to read this and refresh your knowledge. So here are the different parts. We have flashlight, alarm indication light, non-contact voltage sensor, LCD screen, function switching and lock button, frequency duty cycle capacitance zero, flashlight and backlight button, manual auto ranging switch, milliamp input socket, max 600 milliamps, 20 amp input socket, max 20 amps, volt ohm hertz Celsius socket. Then we have the volt ohms hertz Celsius socket and then the comm socket, comm would be like common. So the manual tells what the different buttons are for, so like the backlight flashlight button, you press it to turn on the backlight. You hold it down for two seconds to turn the flashlight on. It says the backlight flashlight automatically turns off after 30 seconds. So this has auto power off. If you're not using it for 15 minutes, it will shut itself off. You can hold down the function hold button and the auto power off will be canceled. Also with that hold button, you can push it for two seconds to activate deactivate display hold. So you can use this if you're taking a reading and you can't really see the screen very well. This will store that reading. Then we have the range. It defaults to auto. You can press the range button to turn to the manual mode. You can hold it down for two seconds to go to auto range mode. And then you can press the range button again to increment through the different ranges. So then it goes and talks about DC and AC voltage measurement, resistance, diode measurement, continuity measurement, capacitance, frequency duty measurement, DC AC current measurement, non-contact voltage test, temperature measurement. And then here we have the specs. So I'll show these on the screen and you can pause and read through those if you'd like. And here's more. This talks about maintenance, cleaning, and how to install the batteries and replace fuses. So let's turn this over. We'll have a place in here to put batteries. Looks like we need a Phillips screwdriver. I'll open this up. So it takes four AAA batteries. So you want to place these in here correctly. I'll put the positive up and I'll slide those in. And this one is negative slid in. And we have the batteries in. And I'll put the cover back on. Now this screw is not captive, so you want to keep track of it. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the meter. So it's plastic on the front, obviously, and then it has this rubber around it. It's flexible, you can see here. It has a kickstand on it. We can pull that out and set it up. Then the batteries were under there. We already replaced those. We have some slots here, put your leads in. There's also a magnet here and a keyhole slot. That would come in very handy in some instances. I was doing work on a humidifier the other day on a furnace and it was hard to hold the meter and take measurements. If I had this meter, I could have just stuck it right on the side of the furnace. On top, we have the non-contact voltage probe and the flashlight. So let's install the probes. So these will go in different places depending on how you want to use this, but I'll put the black in calm. And then I'll put the volts in this one. Use these two if you're doing milliamp or 20 amp readings. So I'll put those in there. And this is fused. So if you blow that fuse out, you could replace that fuse. Now the other end has these tips. I'll pull these off. So the wires are a PVC plastic and the probes are around three feet long. So let's test this out. Let's switch to volts. Now it's super easy for me to read this in person, but I get glare on my camera. One way to help that is I can turn on the backlight. So it'll be a little easier to read on the camera. See if we get a good angle there, okay. So this has auto ranging, I'll press range, and we can switch the different ranges. You can see the decimal moves, I can hold it down, and we'll switch to auto. Now if we want to do AC, we'll press the function hold button, and that will switch to AC mode, and then we can also change the range on there. So let's just measure the voltage on this battery really quick. Okay, so there we can see it's 1.527 volts. Now I'll show the hold button. So I'll hold the probes on the battery. I'll hold down function hold. And now I'll take it off of the battery and it's going to hold that. So you could be digging in some equipment and you can't see your meter very well. It could be off to the side. You can hold your probes in there, hold down function hold, and then look at it after you're done. So next I'll switch to the ohm continuity diode test and it has auto mode. So it tries to figure out what I'm trying to do, but I'll press down function hold and we can see we're in continuity mode. Okay, so I'll demonstrate that.
So next we'll test a resistor. So I have a resistor here. And here we have 9.95 kilo ohms. We can also test diodes with that. If I turn it one more, we have capacitance test. So here we have a capacitor. Now we'll take a second to test these capacitors. You want to hold the probes on there until it finishes the test. And here we have 467 microfarad. And if we look at that, this is a 470. So that's with intolerance. So then we have current. So typically with current, you'll put your probes in line with what you're trying to measure the current on. So I use that quite a bit when I'm working on automotive stuff. So I would switch over the red to the 20 amp here. And I would put this in line with the negative terminal in the battery. And I would check for a parasitic draw. So if it was drawing too much current, then you would try to hunt down which circuit is causing the draw. Oftentimes you'll remove fuses until it stops and then you'll know what branch it's on. So then we have the Hertz and we have the amps. We have the non-contact voltage here. So if we take a power cord, here's a surge strip and we'll put this next to it. It will beep. So it's sensing the electricity there. So that brings me to the other tool. This is a dedicated non-contact voltage detector. So let me get this out. And this has a manual. So if you get one of these, you want to read through this manual. But here are the different functions. It has a probe, the non-contact voltage sensor, the laser pointer, flashlight, signal indicator, high-low signal indicator, power button, sensitivity switch, lighting laser switch, and battery cover. So you'll want to read through all of these instructions to ensure safe operation. But let's take a look at it. So here it is. So I'll press the power button to turn it on. Okay, it beeped. The power light is lit up. Now, if you're having trouble getting this to work, like right now, it's not turning it on, make sure this is tightened all the way so the battery is activated, and now we can turn it on. If you watch this light here, if I just back this off just a little bit even, it turns off. So when you're done using this, you can back this cap off a little bit to deactivate the battery and help save the battery life. Now I can turn on the flashlight here. So this is the flashlight. If I hold it down, I'll turn on the laser pointer so you can see the laser pointer there. So it has two sensitivity levels, low and high. I'll press the HL button to turn it to the high mode and this will light up. And then you can press power to turn it off. So the idea behind a non-contact voltage detector, either in here or in the meter, is so you can check if a wire has voltage on it. Like if you're going to work on an outlet or switch, you can test it with this to tell if there's electricity flowing through there. And about a month ago, I was changing out a switch and I turned off power to the switch and I tested it and it was still live. So I'd hit the wrong switch. So I went and switched to another switch, turned it off, and it was still live. But upon my investigation, there were actually two circuits running through that box. So a tool like this is really nice. So you can go in there and check all of the wires and make sure there's no live voltage on them. But the most important thing when you use something like this is you, you always test it on a known good source every time you use it. Like if the batteries were weak or something, you want to know that beforehand. So you would turn this on, go to an outlet you know works, stick it in, make sure it beeps, and then test the actual circuit you want to test with it. So let's test this on my power strip. I'll place this in the hot side. So the hot is the narrower of the two. So I'll place that in there. It's going to flash and beep. If I go in common, it's not going to flash and beep because there's no current running through the neutral. Now I showed it working on here. This could be my known good source and then I could go to another socket and test it there. But what I did just now is I wouldn't necessarily want to only test it with this and then just say open this up or something. So I always like to keep one of these around if I'm doing electrical work, if I'm swapping out a switch or an outlet or something. When I take that faceplate off, I'll test in there. Maybe even then when I pull the outlet out, I'll give it another little test just to be sure. So back to the meter. This has that same functionality. So we'll go to NCV and we can hold that down there and it's going off. So now let's test the AC voltage. So I want to say this can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So if you don't know how to be safe testing AC voltage, learn about that before you go into this. But you should always check your leads and make sure there's no breaks in the wires or anything. Then I'll stick these in here. I'm going to make sure I don't touch the probes with my fingers. I'll stick that in there and you can see this is not working. So is the meter junk? No. Here's something to keep in mind. This power strip has a function in it that it does not operate if you just stick probes in it. You actually have to stick a plug in it and then it kind of activates it or turns it on. Now you may have similar issues with tamper resistant outlets. So you can use something like this. I'd get a little bit newer one. This is an old chunky one. This is an adapter that adds ground. So I'll plug this in here and now we'll check it. And of course I'll switch this over to AC. And I'll stick this in here and we're getting 123.1 volts. So I can also go here to Hertz, do this one. We should get 60 hertz. So there we're getting around 60 hertz. 
So that hertz could be very helpful with the generator or an inverter. You can test it to make sure it's putting out 60 hertz, or if you're in Europe, it would be 50 hertz. So that's how you measure AC. And with those tamper resistant outlets, I like to keep one of these in my toolbox. So I always have it around. So next let's switch this to C. So that's temperature. I'll pull the temperature probes out. I'll pull these two probes out. So it currently says 22 degrees Celsius. Fahrenheit's more common where I live, so it says 70. So this may have a thermometer in it, actually, but we'll plug in the external one. So I'll use those same two connectors here. And now you could place this probe where you want to measure temperature. So I'll just hold it between my fingers here, and we'll see that rise. So a probe like that could be very handy for testing something like a dehumidifier. You could place this probe in the coils, turn it on, and then you can watch the temperature to see if it's changing. So I'll pull those out. Next we'll look at the flashlight. So I'll hold that light button down, and here we have the flashlight. So needless to say, it's not the brightest light in the world, but I do like that it's built in because you may not always have a flashlight with you. So you can turn this on, look at something really quick, and not have to go run and get a different flashlight. Now, if you're working on something for a few hours, you'll probably want a proper work light, but I like that they include this so you don't have to run and grab one if you just need to read something really quick. So press it again to turn it off, and then I'll turn this off. So we can put the leads in the bottom like this, like so. So you could put both in, or you could just have one. Now this can come in handy in certain situations if you're testing something. You can have that probe there and you can control the whole meter and the probe together, touch it to something, then take the other lead and touch it to something else. So again, when I was working on a humidifier the other day, I could magnet this to the side or I could do this and just touch it to the one probe and then touch this to the other to measure it. So that's a really nice feature. So I'll insert a clip now of this attached to some metal. Okay, so I'm here at my furnace. So I'll place this on my return duct. So there it is. Now I could turn this on. Turn on that backlight. And now I have both hands free so I could remove these caps and measure the voltage on this motor here. Now, of course, I'm holding my camera so I can't really demonstrate it very easily, but this gives you the idea. So that's the Venlab digital multimeter. I really like that this is a full function multimeter. It has the things you'd expect like volts, ohms, continuity, amperage, but then it has things you don't find in all meters like capacitance, non-contact voltage. Of course, it has that backlight and the flashlight. As I get older, I appreciate when the screens are easy to read. So I do like that large display there especially when you turn the backlight on, makes it super easy to read in a dark area. And I like the rubberized coating on this, it makes it very durable. So there are lots of applications for a meter like this. You could use it for electronics, home repair, appliance repair. I use meters all the time when I do automotive repair. So a meter like this can really come in handy for those types of things. Then of course we have the non-contact voltage detector. Sometimes a meter is more than you need. If you're just replacing a switch, you just want to know if there's any current. And that's when I'll use a tool like this. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.